Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one I'm going to be showing you how to implement voice recognition to your game so that you can have keywords or phrases and then they can call functions and do stuff in your game basically. Uh, it's quite easy to set up and obviously it's not for every game but uh, you could make up some quite niche games of uh, voice recognition or you could purposefully implement it to help. Um, I know people use voice um, things like this in games for people that have disabilities and stuff that can't actually like play with mouse and keyboard so they can use their voice. Um, there's plenty of reasons you would use it, and also it's just quite kind of like a cool thing, isn't it, to use your voice to do stuff. It's not very practical, um, but you know, you can implement it, and you know, it's not a bad thing. Um, so, first of all, I'll show you me using it. So we're in play, uh, we're in runtime, here's the um, cube, and I've put a script on it where I can use four different commands to move it around. So, here we go. So, I can say forward, 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 to make it go that forward, then we can say up, up, obviously up, uh, down, down, back, 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 down, forward. There you go. So that's basically me just having four different um, functions I get called and they just do transform.translate in a particular direction. Uh, obviously that's just a simple use of it. But yeah, I'll just show you how to do that and then you can obviously just take this and add your own functions and do it your own way. It's going to be quite simple. It won't, shouldn't be too long of a tutorial actually. So, first of all, I'm going to obviously delete the script because that's what we're going to be doing. Here's the window now. Okay, so here's the cube. Just let it compile back. Alright, so there's no script on the cube now. So, the first thing you need to do for this is you need to allow Unity to use your microphone. Um, so, well, let's just remove this out of play mode. So, to let it use your microphone, you have to go File, Build Settings, Player Settings, and you need to go to the Windows uh, section. If you don't actually have the Windows section, there will be a little button on here that says, you know, get, get it, basically. So, you click on it, it takes you to a website, you download it, and you're on the Windows part. And then down here, you scroll, and there's capabilities, and it basically allows um, your... Um, it allows your game to use these things that you you know allow it to use so you can actually let it use your music library or your pictures library i've not delved into using that ever but you know you can do that and you might want to look into it if it's pretty cool you can use bluetooth whatever whatever you need to use on your windows device obviously then ios has their own but i haven't installed that or anything um so here we go yeah you just select microphone done yeah whatever so you go back that means it's enabled you know your game can use the microphone now so now we have to write some code that uh, listens for us, basically. So let's add a component to the cube, and I was just call I just call it voice movement. So we'll just add that script to the cube, and we'll open that up in Visual Studio. So here it is. Now let's just get rid of our starting methods. There we go. So we're gonna have to import some different things, and I'll just explain how the system works. It's quite simple. Let me just uh, zoom in. So first of all we need um, a specific class or object thing that is for the speech recognition. So uh, what it's called is it's called keyword recognizer. So if you write, we want private keyword recognizer. I will tell you that we don't actually have it imported. So if you just do this, boom, unity engine windows dot speech. Then we just need a variable name for it. So, you know, keyword recognizer. And this is what, as you can probably guess, does the keyword recognizing. Um, there's particular functions in here to have it listen for you and then uh, recognize uh, phrases and stuff like that and we'll get into that. Um, what else do we want? Well, we want to basically have um, keywords to call functions and one way to do that is by having a dictionary. So what we can have is we can have the two parts in the dictionary be um, a string which is the, the keyword recognizer takes a string which is what it's waiting to hear. So if you put the word forward it waits till you know you put a string forward and it'll wait for the word forward uh, and then you want to have that in the dictionary with a um, function or an event for it but no yeah you have a function um, that it calls so when it hears that word it calls the function associated with it so it's a good way to use a dictionary so private dictionary and then we put in the um, key and the value so the key is the string um, which is going to be like forward up down back and then we have the action. Um, we need to separate with a comma. Um, and it's not part of this. You have to actually import link q. Uh, no, that's for the other thing. Sorry. Uh, what am I on about? That's for a different thing we have to import. But I might as well just do it anyway. So uh, using system dot. There we go. That's for something else we need later. It, you would, it would tell you to put it anyway. And then we just need. Um, 
what is it we need to actually give the list a name so to call it actions and it's a new dictionary of type string action so there we go now we need to basically just add to it our strings and action and it's quite simple just in the uh, start method we'll just add our methods so we want to have um, what do we want um, should we just do the same I'll, I'll show you how I did what I showed at the start so uh, actions dot add and as you see it takes in a string and a value so we're going to pass in because um, obviously it takes in a string here and then the action there's the value so we're going to take in uh, for, oops, forward I'm not, I don't actually know if uppercase makes a difference but lowercase works fine I, I don't know why it would make a difference anyway um, so I'm forward and then um, we'll make a function for this so we'll just call it forward um, obviously it's missing at the moment but that's the name of the function then we'll just do it again so we go uh, actions.add um, up and we'll make a function called up uh, actions.add down called down and finally actions.add um, back and we'll make a function called back there we go um, so that's just adding to the dictionary the different commands we want so forward up down back now we need to actually initialize the uh, keyword recognizer because currently we just have it saying yep this script stores a um, a private keyword recognizer type but we haven't actually done anything with it we need to set it so we're going to say keyword recognizer is equal to new keyword recognizer and it takes in a string of keywords um, like an array of strings for the keywords it listens for basically so when you say something it checks it will check through that um, array of strings to see if any of the things you said are in that list so we have to basically take this um, and get the strings we, we just want to basically take all the strings from here and use that so to do that you want to go actions um, and then obviously here's all the things in actions now you could get uh, values or you could get keys now as you know the first thing in the dictionary is a key then it's a string so we want to get the keys which is a the keys itself is a um, list of um, yes yeah, so it's saying basically we can't convert this um, because the keys isn't in array format it wants an array so to array and if I didn't have uh, this as you see it's gonna say you need that to do to array so there you go okay um, now um, if you go to the keyword recognizer it has an event on it as you see here's the few things you can do with it so there's not actually much you can do with it here you can get a boolean back if it's running or whatever um, get the keywords but here we go it's an event the little lightning symbol means event there you go um, and if you can't tell already this event gets called when you know it recognizes a phrase that we say from the list so um, with events and callbacks you don't do equals you do plus equals because it's adding something for it to do when um, when it gets triggered this is basically saying um, we want it to do this and then we could also add another thing so that it does two things when we do it but all we want to do now is we want to run a function um, we're gonna have a function down here and we'll call it um, what should we call it um, well this is the function that gets called when it recognizes something we've said so I'll just call it um, Actually, that would be a boolean. I'll just call it rec recognized. Oh, I can't type. Uh, like recognize recognized um, speech. I don't know. Um, but that takes in a phase recognized event args, and we'll just call it um, speech. And we're going to add um, the recognized speech event there so that basically means that when this event gets triggered call this and then we could just add another function if we wanted to um, and this passes in this type and we're calling the variable speech so we could just um, we could just debug.log the speech to see what we've said um, so debug.log speech dot uh, text so as you see here the text that was recognized and then now what we want to do is we want to invoke uh, these methods depending on what we've said. So uh, it's actions, but then we need to um, give the key for it to do the event. 
So if, if we want to um, trigger the action, we need to give it the key with it. Um, it's like a 2D list, a 2D array. So as you see, it takes in a string key. Now what we can actually pass in is we can pass in the string that it recognized, so speech uh, dot text. Because if we pass that in, it's going to get the action associated with it. So if we've said if forward is the string, then it will do the forward function. If up is a string, it'll do the up function. And then um, obviously we have to invoke it. And there we go. So now we just need to write these four methods. Uh, so if we go down and just write um, private void forward, and we just say transform dot translate. Um, what's transform dot translate? Um, for forward, it'd be one zero zero. If you're going forward in the X, um, then obviously uh, back would be transform dot translate um, minus one zero zero. And if I just uh, copy these, and we have uh, up and down. For these, we would want to go up and down in the Y. So. Um, up in the Y is 1, down in the Y is negative 1. And now we're done. Obviously, all the red's gone here because it knows that this method now exists, and so do all the others. So basically, um, one more line, one more line, sorry. Uh, now that we've actually done all this, we have to start the thing. So basically, if we didn't do the start thing, it wouldn't pick up our voice. This is what starts it listening to us. Um, if we wanted it to stop at some point, you would just do keyword recognize the dot stop. Obviously, there's no point pointing there because it never, it's never going to work. Um, so if you only wanted it to listen for a certain amount of time, you would have a start and then a stop when you want it to stop listening. Um, but for the sake of this, we're just going to have uh, it stay on because I'm just showing you for the sake of this tutorial. But you would want to not have it running all the time, probably. Um, but now it starts. So we've got we've got our dictionary sorted. We've got all the things in the dictionary. Um, we've created the object and we've given it a um, function to be called when it, this gets triggered. And that, that gets triggered as soon as um, one of these strings is recognized by our voice. And then it's going to run the function, recognize speech. Here we go. Um, then we can just debug what we've said just to make sure it picks up right. Um, and then actions. Um, we're going to run the action associated with what we said. So if we said forward, runs forward, up, up, yep. And then uh, here are the functions. So all fingers are crossed, hoping this works like it did earlier. So are you ready? Okay. Forward. Forward. Up. Back. Back. Down. 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 Forward. Up. Forward. Works like a charm. So there you have it. There's not much more else to say this video, to be honest. Uh, it works. It's simple. You know, you can do it yourself. You can add more functions and come up with some fancy ideas. Uh, maybe you can involve it in a game, even if it's not like a proper game, just for the fun of it. You know, you could you could think of a little project to involve voice recognition. Maybe you could have like, um, I don't know, NPCs and you could respond with your own voice if you had like certain um, certain responses. I mean, it would be a bit more complicated than this. You might have to have like a list of possible responses. But even then, or you could even look for just keywords because um, obviously it's quite hard for it to... Um, you, you can't really determine uh, a full phrase someone's going to say unless you know maybe you could have the text options on screen but you have to say them whatever it's up to you if you've got any good ideas and just you know be sure to say um as well as working on my main game project i'm thinking of starting uh, some little projects like doing my own little like one week challenges and just building like little games just to get a bit more diversity rather than just single rpgs um i can do like uh, you know rts or um strategy like well that's strategy you know what i mean though i can try different kinds of games um just making little mock-ups of them rather than obviously not making full games just like mechanics from them um but yeah obviously if you uh like these videos and you want to see more unity tutorials or any tutorials on my channel just be sure to subscribe uh leave your ideas down in the comments below um i think the main thing i want video ideas for right now is just like mechanics in games that people want to know how to make or just you know how do you do this in unity um Preferably not shaders, because I've kind of exhausted the shaders uh, to my knowledge at the moment. Um, when I get to the point in my game where I need to write custom shaders for my for my particles and um, like just materials in general, then I might start making those videos again, because I'll probably expand my knowledge a bit more. But at the moment, I I'm not an expert on shaders. I haven't studied it yet or anything. I'm all self-taught, so um, don't expect me to be a shader professional. Everything I've done so far is to the extent of what I know. Um, so yeah, um, but when it comes to Unity in general, uh, I'm quite knowledgeable. So, you know, feel free to just keep asking for tutorials. I've got a few more ideas uh, ready to do, but if people want anything in particular, then I'll be sure to do it. Um, 
so yeah uh apart from that obviously if you haven't subscribed join please um same with our discord server links in the description but apart from that thanks for watching and goodbye